Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial. In this video we are going to learn how to use the graph editor and do a basic little animation here. Uh, nothing too complicated uh, but yeah let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this is what, I'll s what our scene will sort of end up looking like minus this stuff so oh wait actually it will still have the ground plane. So it'll look like this, uh, this way. This is what we were creating. Let's go ahead and get started. File, new, Blender, general. And then let's go ahead and delete this and add a new plane. This is gonna be our ground floor. I'm gonna go into the three, the numpad view, and hit Shift A, add mesh, and do a UV sphere. And I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller just so that I don't have to zoom out so much with the camera and everything. And well, I guess we we're not going to do too much with the camera, but it'll just be easier, I think, to have it zoomed down a little bit. Uh, if you click down right down here, I, you saw how I opened it this way. I actually don't want that. But right, I wish I could zoom in right there, but there's like a little, there's a little black area. It's really poor in Blender 2.8. Hopefully they fix that in future versions. Uh, but you can click on that and just drag and it will actually split your screen. We want this to be split for what we're going to be doing right now. And then we're going to turn this one into the graph editor. Sweet. Okay, now just make sure you got everything in the view that we can do. Uh, this is the easiest way that I have found to work with this ball. So what I did is if I start at frame one and I just hit I, lock rot, lock, rot scale, which stands for keyframe location rotation and scale then we get it all down here which works out perfect and then well, I don't know let's go 30 or so in and I lock, lock rot scale right there and then actually let's move it down that was stupid of me lock rot scale sweet now let's in here you can see that we have a whole bunch of lines. Well, it doesn't look like very many, but we have one here, and we have a lot down here, but you can't see them all. And I think we, yeah, we have one down here too. What we want to do is we want to get rid of all of them, except for, uh, and we can look up here, it's on the Z axis, the up and down. So let's go to Z location. And we can just click on the eyeball, and we can get it. Sweet. Okay, now let's click on these are these are like little dots, little vectors that we can click on. If you ever worked within like Illustrator, it's actually really similar to like drawing in Illustrator. These are Bezier curves. Um, so let's go ahead and hit N, and these curves we want. Let's click on this one. This one's actually fine, but let's click on this bottom one and turn the handle from uh, auto clamped into a free which just allows us to uh, have these work separately whereas before on auto clamped if we move one we move them both so let's turn that back to free now when balls fall uh, like we're looking like I guess a bouncy ball when they fall they're going to fall and they always increase in speed until they hit the ground. So it would be something like this, but in like thought, it would be like always increasing in speed until it just hits there. But we also have like drag. So uh, let's just maybe like put it right there or so, so that it comes down and then it hits. Now you can see this one doesn't really do anything over here, uh, and that's for a reason. We don't have any keyframes. So let's just go up here and hit I, lock rot scale, without moving this. We don't want to move it up because, oops, uh, actually that'll still work, but we want to move this forward. I forgot to do that, my bad. Um, and then I, lock rot scale. The reason why we didn't want to move this though is because we want the Bezier curve because it's actually more accurate than we could be by animating it ourselves to just create the arch for us. And because this is a Z location, this actually is very accurate to what's going to happen. It's going to go, it's going to go, uh, 
in the z-axis it's going to slowly increase and then faster and faster and then it's going to come up and that's so this is the kind of shape that we're going to be looking for um, I don't know if that makes any sense but it'll just slowly and then it'll get faster and faster and faster and faster and then it'll stop and it'll bounce so it'll go back fast but it won't be as high and we're going to just say it's half of the height of the previous one for each one of these. So we could do that with this and do these handles. So imagine there was a handle over here. The, this handle and this handle would be the same height because an arch we're going to neglect a little bit of air resistance in this process a little bit. Uh, but yeah this and we can even zoom in here. This one and this one should be around the same height. Let's see if that, yeah, that's about right. Um, also, something else that's neat is, let's put this in maybe like on 15. You can just click and drag these, but it has the same shortcuts as you, you would use in just normal Blender. So if you hit G and you like just lock it, you can actually move this across. Uh, we probably want that to be 15. And this one's gonna be like double that, 30 minus a little bit somewhere in here and then let's play it okay so that's what we've got so far now all we gotta do is just uh, come out here uh, I lock route scale free move up this and move it about half and do it again I lock route scale click on this vector, click free, move it up, move it about halfway up. Uh, something also to take in mind, like I just did here, this would normally be on 30, but because our object is going to eventually get a little bit slower, we want to make these frames get a little bit narrower, as would in the real world. And something else that's kind of cool you can look at, if you can fill this frame, this arch, if you zoom into this one, should look exactly the same. It should just keep on going if you were to zoom in on them. So let's put this one where it would be. We don't get anything, but let's I lock up scale, click on this vector, hit free. And let's do one more. I lock out scale. Okay, so now let's just give this a good watch and see what happens. Yeah, okay, so that's not horrible. Uh, you can also, whoops, did not mean to do that. Uh, you can also fine tune this to your own pleasure. Uh, but we only have it going up and down. We want it to go left and right. Turns out this is really easy. Uh, because we have this in the graph editor, let's turn off the Z location. We don't want it anymore, that'll just confuse us. Let's turn on what would look like the Y axis, which is why we want it to go this way. So let's turn on the Y. And let's, uh, if you don't, if you can't find it, you can just hit dot on your numpad and it will bring you to where all of those nodes are. Uh, are these vector, yeah. So now we can just click on these and see them. Fun fact, when a ball travels, it is actually pretty linear. So like it would be, it would be a constant speed except for a little bit of air resistance and we want that because we want the ball to eventually slow down so this is really cool so we can see our first dot here and our last dot here if you hit if you deselect everything by double tapping A if you hit B you can select all of the dots in between and hit X to delete them because we want this to be fairly linear we don't want anything in between them and then uh, bring your timeline all the way to this last one and just move it up 
until you get the ball how far you want it. So let's say you want it right here. All you have to do is bring it all the way to right there. So it's it's really that easy. And then if you play it, it's pretty close. I mean, it's off. That's the pro oh, it's because there was one more. My bad. We need to get rid of this one. Okay, that was from my problem. Hopefully you didn't have the same issue. But it's okay, it's still the same difference if we delete it after or delete it before. Uh, because now if we play it, it's pretty close. The main difference is, is we have this slowly starting at the beginning and then it gets fast right here and it slows down right here. So what we want to do is we want to actually uh, turn this one into a free and do something like this where it slows down here at the end but it's going fast it goes fast at the beginning and it always gets slower whereas before it was slow fast slow yeah and then it gets a little bit of that rolling action at the end uh, if we want this to be further we can always just grab this and drag it up and it will just increase it. We can we can go as far or little, no matter what we want. This is completely editable, editable to us. So now let's just change uh, our ending frame to 66 and just play this. So now it almost looks like it got thrown. And if we just bring this down, it will play it to whatever distance we want this ball to be dropped at. So, and that's really the power of the graph editor and I hope that this has been a great introduction to the graph editor, graph editor and that this explains a little bit about it and I hope that you liked it and like subscribe at the bottom and we'll see you next time. Bye.